so sharp. I need a serious time out in the bathroom. Splash water on my face and make sure I don't look like a total loser. I hate that class. It's so fucking boring. She's so fucking shy. She takes selfies with a silent camera. What do you get when you cross the precedents set forward by developers Quantic Dream and Telltale? Well, that would be Life is Strange, a coincidentally memorable episodic adventure game from developers Don't Knob Entertainment, the people behind the ironically forgettable Remember Me. While their 2013 product was not an absolute failure, it was unable to capitalize on the promise of its concept. Fortunately, Life is Strange isn't plagued with those same issues from Remember Me, as it ditches its action-adventure sampling roots in favor of a more modern adventure game. Its first of five episodes, titled Chrysalis, not only sparks interest for what is to come, but is probably the most promising title of the new year thus far. The story follows Max, an 18-year-old female student at Blackwell Academy for her senior year of high school, attempting to pursue her dream of becoming a photographer. To keep it brief, let's say she's not enjoying herself as much as she thought she would. Look, it's Max Caulfield, the selfie hoe of Blackwell. What a lame gimmick. Even Mark, Mr. Jefferson, falls for your wave hipster bullshit. While casually attending class one day, she finds herself in a surreal dream, only to return able to rewind time itself. This is Life is Strange's main mechanic and plot component. With a simple tap of the left trigger, you can rewind certain decisions and the resulting outcomes. Naturally, this comes into play with various puzzles of the sort, but the twist is that you always have the option to change a decision if it's not to your liking, as long as you don't leave the event's general area. Given the genre and polish of the title, this mechanic is welcomed with open arms. The system adds additional depth to the story and characters that I would otherwise be completely oblivious to. Even if the situation was already in my preference on an initial attempt, I found myself rewinding anyway to view how the characters would adjust to different outcomes, occasionally leading me to change my decision yet again from further insight I gained on the characters from those other decisions. To put it simply, this time manipulation mechanic is greatly implemented and a needed change of pace from the heavy use of quick time events that both Quantic Dream and Telltale games are guilty of. It's also worth pointing out that the main characters in the game are very round. Max appears believably socially awkward to certain crowds, but also innocent and generally likable. Must protect my precious so Max never has to chase it down again. It should also be noted that Life is Strange evokes a fairly abstract art style. While nothing revolutionary, it's portrayed in a very artistic sense that I am obviously having trouble communicating to words right now. I'm not really an expert in this area, but let's just just look at it. Come on, that's some good rain effects right there. Technically, the remaining aspects of this game are just fine. The game runs at a consistent and reasonable frame rate, all while seamlessly flowing from gameplay to cutscenes. Simultaneously, the game is fully voiced with excellent voice acting. Nearly every NPC in the game has a name and something to say. Sure, the lip sync is almost always tremendously horrible, but it's easily forgivable given the rest of this exceptional package. At the end of the day, Life is Strange inaugural episode Chrysalis is a fairly promising start to what may become a great full game. The production quality is clearly present, and the characters seem round enough to carry on the remainder of the season. The only real concerns for the future are aspects of the plot. The episode's intentionally ambiguous ending leaves on a note similar to that of a television program's pilot episode. I mean, that's fine given the game, but it just may as easily jump the shark as it may pull a 12 Monkeys-esque revelation at the end. But hey! I'm interested. Life is Strange may not be as thought-provoking or emotionally impactful as its big-budget contemporaries, but it's almost guaranteed to provide you with a fairly enjoyable two-hour start. <laughs>